It's Total Pole Nation, Coach Bald and Coach Taylor. And this is another episode of the Life Lessons Podcast. Coach Bald, how you feeling? Hey, man, TGIF, the grind includes Friday, so I'm excited. Uh, we're back. We're back in business. I'm breaking out the red right here. Little small logo, but hey, man, it's all good. It's all good. Good to see you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to everybody here. Uh, yeah, man, let's do this thing. So yesterday, some people told me you weren't allowed to live stream when you're driving. So one of the talk says song 16 carriages. What's up, Chase Davis? What's up? What's up, brother? This is Coach Taylor from Richmond, Virginia. Coach Ball from St. Petersburg. That is not a green screen behind Coach Ball. And this is a real screen. This is a wall behind me. We wanted to talk a little bit about legacy. Beyonce's song, 16 Carriages, one of her two country songs that she just came out with. Man, this second song that she came out with, 16 Carriages, is powerful, Coach Bald. The 16 Carriages are the 16 tour buses that roll up. And she talks about when she left home at 15, and then, you know, she's about umpteenth years, and then she's 38, and she misses her kids. But at the end of the song, she says, Legacy. You'll remember me because we got something to prove. If this is the last thing I do in your memory on a high, on a highway to truth, still see your faces when you close your eyes. And I was thinking, what does that mean? And I think that she's talking to her kids that I don't think they will ever understand the pain and the struggle that she had to go through to get to where she is. And that one day she, they still have something to prove though. And I think she's talking to us. And when they close their eyes, she hopes that they still see, I guess, her and her husband, Jay-Z. How does that make you feel, Coach Bald? With what you're going through, being a life coach and legacy? Yeah, man, uh, you know, that's what the, leg the legacy is for. Mm -hmm. Know, what you want to be known as and who you want to be known for, you know, and I think, uh, you know, just being a positive person, man, there's so much negative in this world that you can focus on. All you got to do is turn on your news channel. You're going to see it. You know what I mean? You don't see uh, good stories or people uh, inspiring people and everything like that. And uh, yeah, man, it hits, it hits hard with me right now. You know, uh, my mother-in-law right now, she's uh, going through stage four pancreatic cancer. And she's fighting her ass off right now. And it's so inspiring because, you know, not only is she a mother, but she's fighting this and she's fighting for her grandkids, her son-in-law, her, all her kids. You know, it's just uh, very inspiring seeing her uh, just keep on keeping on. You know what I mean? Somehow she just ends up with a smile on her face and, you know, it's uh, it's very motivating. And, you know, her legacy for me is, you know, that she's always been one that has brought everybody together. She's always brought that unity. And whenever you're with her, she makes you feel like the most important person that's there. And her favorite, mm. what I mean, everybody is her favorite. And it's funny, I joke with her and, you know, I was like, oh, we all know, you know, my brother Mario is your favorite. But I kept telling her, but, but see, you're all of our favorite everybody you know she's everybody's favorite so yeah man it is uh and you know with uh you know with my daughters and my granddaughters man i want them to live the legacy as well you know and make their own legacy and everything and that's why i got you know sophia into the warrior kid books you know and all the young kids that are watching this uh check out that book way of the warrior kid by jocko willink uh just kind of gives you a blueprint you know he just kind of leaves a footprint so to say uh for for you know goals to reach and just a good blueprint on how, how you need to live your life and everything. So that's what that's what the legacy means to me. But also you saying that and how she uh, she was meaning, it made me think about Coach Bob Wiley, you know, and his unconscious, conscious decisions. It's, you know, he would coach his guys up so much that they would – they would do it so many times that they were just doing it automatically. It was automatically. It wouldn't even be thought in their mind that I got to do this process to get to here. You've done it so many times. It just, it's what you do. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what it means to me. I haven't heard the song or anything, but uh, 
and 16 tour buses. I bet she never imagined that at 15 years old. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in, in, at the beginning of the song, she says her mama's praying and her daddy's on the grind. But then by the end of the song, I think she's gotten older. She's seen things from a different perspective. She says her mama's crying and her daddy's lying. And, like, that's sad because, like, Whitney Houston's dad stole all of her money. I don't know if Beyonce's dad did the same thing or not. I mean, but, like, parents living through their kids. And, I mean, my own son has a YouTube channel with a 1,000 subs, and he's live streaming. I told him, I said, dude, you're living your dream. Like, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a TV commentator. I wanted to talk about sports. Look at us now, Coach Bald. We're streaming. Where was that kid from yesterday? Norway? MK. Yeah. What is up, MK? MK is like, she's like the president of the totem polars. We're going we're gonna to have to send her something, man. Special. You know, maybe some merch, some stickers, some pins, something. Yeah, man. Huge shout out. My man Chase Davis, I know he uh, chimed in. Uh, man, Chase is, he's that dude, man. If you like sports gambling and wagering, man, this guy, he dives into the games that are, you know, they're not the, the top 10 games that you'll see. You know, it's not top 10 teams, but man, he knows his stuff. He studies his craft. And uh, yeah, man, he's picking winners every single night. So big shout out to him. He uh, he hit me up last night and uh, he cashed. Hey, man, look at all these guys in the chat, man. Lean batter, do you have a dog? Hassan, what's up? MK, uh, always here. Hassan, what's up? Shout out, please. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Give us a subscribe. We are the low man on the totem pole. All right? This is Totem Pole Nation. We're a sports channel, but we're also doing more than sports because it's a head fake. I like Magic Johnson. Coach Bald, I went up into second chance or second in something. Look at that dog. There he is. They had an autograph copy of a framed Magic Johnson. Lean Batter, can you please give me a shout out? Yeah, man, we'll give you a shout out. Give us a sub. Give us a like. You know, we love it. But they had a Magic Johnson signed photo for $150. Then they had a Yogi Berra for $20. That didn't seem right. Yogi Berra? Man. I should have bought that. I'm an idiot. Come on, man. Yeah. Like that's that's my dude. If the fork's in the road, take it. Hey, take the fork. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It ain't over till it's over. Dude, I was listening to Dick Gregory today, man. Man, I'm I'm fired up, y'all. Good, man. Coach, are you fired up? What are you fired up about, coach? Friday, man. It's Friday. The weekend is here. It's Friday. 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 Don't Friday. Get don't get fired on your day off for stealing boxes, okay? Hassan, what's up? We're giving you a shout-out. Hey, Hassan, put in the comments where you're at. What state you're in? If you're in another country, we had somebody from Norway. I mean, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. This is Coach Taylor. This is Coach Bald. You can just call us Coach. Coach and Coach Bald. You can call me, you can call me Coach Boschia. Look at that. Yeah, man, Bangladesh. Like that. Man, I hope you're not trying to learn to speak English and listen to me because, dude, I can't hardly speak English myself. Have you ever heard anybody with a dialect? Look at Basquiat. That's my favorite. Last day of school. You look like twins. That's a good thing. That means Coach Bald has gotten fat or I have gotten skinny. So, oh, you're fluent. So you can understand me because I can't speak English. Ice cream time. Yo. Shout out to my dude, the real John F. Kennedy Jr. Man, coach, I read this book in one day. Chase, it's Friday, boys. I got to get back to work. Have a great day. Hassan said you can. Oh, wow. So what type of dialect, what type of accent have you ever heard of an American speak like this? Yep, me. I also understand everything you're saying. Man, please come to America. All right, because we need to make this a better country, man. Like, dude, they used to say we were the greatest of all time. Like, coach, are we still the greatest of all time? We got the Super Bowl. MK with the book. Hassan, yeah. Stolen identity. 
This guy says he's the real John F. Kennedy Jr. Dude, does your hair ever change, coach? Does it ever go from being straight? I'm trying. Abdul man, nice. I hope one day to visit USA. We want you to we want good people in this country. Because I don't understand something, coach. This is about legacy. If the American people don't want to give somebody a hundred a hundred billion dollars, a hundred billion dollars to other countries, if the American people don't want that to happen, coach, what's supposed to happen? We're supposed to vote them out, right? Something's got to change. Hassan, we want you here. We want good people, man. What do you think, coach? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, they're letting illegals in that are some bad hombres. You know what I mean? And, yeah, you want to ship a bunch of money to these countries that you're not yeah. keeping score on where the money's going, what they're doing with the money. And yet you got people starving in your front yard. It's uh, it's a shame. Yeah, bro. Pork big- ain't good for you, man. Pork ain't good for you. The diary of the wimpy kid. All right, especially beef burgers. We eat beef burgers, hamburgers. Coach Bald, tell them about the book they need to read by Jocko Willink. The Way of the Warrior Kid. That Hassan, is- love you, brother. That is way. Love you, man. Diary of the wimpy kid. The Warrior Kid is a great book. Uh, it comes in an edition. You can get five editions, and it pretty much goes from, you know, a kid going from elementary school to middle school all the way up to high school and everything. But what it does, it just gives you a good blueprint. You know, it leaves footsteps for you to follow and for you to get on the path. And what is the path? Everybody's path is different, and everybody's path, you know, can be their own. But it's it's about doing the right thing, and it's about building Building into a better person, building into a better player. Uh, what a good coach can do is he can see a player and he can, maybe this player is at this level, but this coach can bring him up here, you know, and there's different ways about that. And that's kind of what this book does it challenges you to get better. And uh, that's what we're about here on Totem Pole Nation. Okay. Coach, <laughs> did you? Footprints. Did you ever think someone would accuse us of being twins? You know what? It kind of reminds me, uh, you know, there was a movie back in the day with Arnold Schwarzenegger. and Mm -hmm. I wish I was (laughs) as tall as him. He's about six foot five. (laughs) All right. I'm about five foot ten on a good day. I'm five foot ten with my laying on my back with my belly sticking up. MK. I don't know if I'm getting skinny or coach is getting fat. I don't know. I think he's looking good. I don't like it when you get too skinny, man. You look like you start to look like Tom Brady, like a skeletor. Dude. Ab- Abdur, I will subscribe. Nice to see people who are talking, speaking English, not like others, with no purpose, to be frank. Wow. This is our purpose. One, change lives. Two, help others. Three, build champions. Can we say lean batter is the best? Lean back. The real John F. Kennedy Jr. Yeah. (laughs) This guy. Man, I believed his story until I read this book. OK, because when you start talking about Lady Gaga, when she's eight years old, and she played the xylophone on Hotel California. And when he was seven and he was already told he was going to Hollywood star. I mean, dude, coach, you could tell me one lie and I can believe it. But you tell me 400 lies. Hmm. But just because you told me 399 lies, does that mean that the one thing isn't true? I don't know. Get the book. $20. Go help him. He's living in a mobile home somewhere, man. All right. It's John F. Kennedy Jr. I mean, do you know anything about the Kennedy curse? Yeah, we've heard about it. Yeah, it's... Man. 
It's not good. Yeah. Lean batter. I lean back. I lean back. Coach, did you know that Jay-Z and Fat Joe had a long-standing rivalry? Look at that. That's paradise, y'all. That's where I don't live. That is not a green screen. I'm going to grab a cup of Joe, but uh, What's yeah. What's the man. curse? You should, a, you should ask your history teacher, MK. What's the Kennedy curse? Okay, so let's start with this. John F. Kennedy. Assassinated. Dallas, Texas. Lone gunman. Hmm, sure. Robert F. Kennedy walked him through a hotel kitchen where there was Sirhan Sirhan, who supposedly shot him from the front, but the autopsy said the bullets came from the back. Oh, there's John F. Kennedy Jr., who died in a plane crash. So if may I ask you both, how is the life there? Is it better? I mean, the time difference and everything. Dude, I have never met anyone who was not from this country that came here that didn't say they loved it. I had one kid from China once. Actually, that's a lie. I had one kid from China. A kid from China told me that he liked China better. And I was like, well, why is that? And he said, because it's safer. Hmm. He said we couldn't go outside after 10 p.m. And the only people that had guns was the government and the police, which the police was the government. Okay, that's un-American to us. All right, we don't trust the government. Hmm. Yeah, coach. So, he wants to know his life better. So that's the thing, you know, I heard, you know, some people come out yesterday about, you know, guns and gun laws let me tell you guys this okay if you take away guns do you think the bad guys are going to come up there and hand over their guns okay no it's not going to be them it's going to be no guys that they're forced to do this okay so when you say that think of you know mental health yeah, man. mental health in this on this planet is it's got a lot of it's got a lot of issues, you know, and that was one reason why I went into life coaching and everything, because I didn't start off where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? I like to say this. I started with nothing and I still got half of it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I mean, you know, when you hear them talk about that kind of stuff, that's what they're going to do. They're going to take the guns from you and me. They're not going to take them from uh, the bad hombres. That, they're not that, bad. The only people that's going to have, if it's illegal, the only people that break the law are the people that are criminals. Lean Batter wants to know, do you have a rat? Yes, I'm sure I do have a rat. We have some mice. We have some cockroaches where I live. Nice. Hope you gain more and more success. Wow. What a blessing, okay. man. Coach, did you ever hear what John Gruden did when he was coaching for the Eagles? They had a rat issue at the stadium. Yeah. Well, what actually happened is they had a cat issue. So he would show up. You know, John Gruden, one of these guys that sleeps two hours a day, would show up every morning at 3.30 in the parking lot. And, dude, he would just see these ginormous cats roaming around the stadium. So, finally, he went to – the custodian was like, dude, what is up with these menacing? <laughs> and custodian said, well, coach, let me ask you this. Rather have menacing cats or menacing rats? So the cats were there to protect the place from the rats. Well, I mean, when you say a rat, you're actually talking like a rat, like a big mouse. Critter, okay, yeah. so we have some mice. They're not very big. There's really rats in New York City. Right. All right, but they, they kind of stay in the dark. They don't usually come out during the day because they want to live. I mean, these, these mice have gotten so smart, dude. Like, they can eat the cheese and the peanut butter and laugh at you. Like, they're smarter than the mousetrap now. Yeah, dude, it's, it's unbelievable. It's so funny here too in Pinellas County. If you know you you call your you know local 
employee, they will send the, the county will send out a guy and he will bring a rat trap and he will set it up for you in your yard, man. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool deal. And all you got to do is call him. He'll show up every couple of months and exchange the boxes and everything here. Yeah. We, here we used to get a lot more because, you know, at one time we had an avocado tree, uh, had a, uh, you know, a couple fruit trees around here. We don't anymore, but at one time we had the avocado trees and yeah, man, you definitely got some other stuff. Besides. Yeah. So there's, there are cleaning companies and dude, a rat is a big thing. Like I don't, I was kidding around like, dude, rats are, are in new, uh, they're real big. Like they, they live in New York city or something like, but we have mice, you know, little mice. This is Virginia. Like I'm about, I'm near Washington, D.C. I'm near the capital of the United States of America. You know, land of the free and home of the brave. And we like American football here. What sport do y'all play in Bangladesh? What sport? Is it wrestling? Is it soccer? Football? Yeah. Sure, soccer's got to be, uh, got to be popular there. Pro maybe rugby, man. Love watching rugby. Dude. Okay, I got to brag for a second. MK, I know you're listening. I had a kid in my class yesterday. This kid. Oh, you're not in Bangladesh. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. What? Where are you at? Put put where you're at. I don't know what state are you in, if you're in the United States or what country are you in. But I had a guy tell me, a kid in my class, who's a senior, and he's a Fortnite and football expert. The dude's got an IQ of 150. He's a human computer, dude. This is what he told me. He goes, I want to see what rank your son is. So I showed him some of Jackson's Saudi Arabia. <laughs> nice. Nice. Ha question. How much is the Saudi royal family worth? How much are they worth? Do we even know? Are they, do they have more money than Apple? Three trillion American dollars. I say they do. All right. Show me one of your mice. I got to, dude. I mean, I don't know to be frank. Okay. Lean battered. Like, dude, I, we, I'm just kidding with you. Like, where this dude lives, there ain't mice. Look where he lives. This is, this like, is my mouse right here. Check this guy out. Yeah, that's a, that dog's 140 years old. In a, human years. That dude is 20 years old. That's a 20-year-old dog. Yep. In America, the dogs live longer. I don't know why, but they do. Florida. It's a Florida dog. That dog is so cute. MK, this kid told me... He said, your son is unreal rank. Coach, I don't even know what that means, but it's the highest level of Fortnite. And I said, well, dude, I said, tell me, is, is he like have the potential to be Patrick Mahomes in Fortnite? The kid goes, no, nope, because Patrick Mahomes has the ability to become the GOAT. I said, okay. I said, so like, would you say he's Jordan Love? He goes, well, Jordan Love is a professional. He gets paid to play. Your son does not get paid to play. I would say he is an All-American. I said, an All-American? He goes, yes, collegiate All-American. What? And I said, well, if there was a draft, where would my son be drafted in Fortnite? The kid goes, fourth or fifth round. <laughs> Dude, my son has the potential to be a fourth or fifth round draft pick in Fortnite if he was an NFL player. Wow. Shout out to all my non-parenting skills and help that I haven't given him to become a potential fourth or fifth round pick in the NFL draft. For Isn't Fortnite. that crazy, dude? If somebody told you when you were in seventh grade, that you had the potential to be a fourth or fifth round pick in the NFL draft. What would that have done to you? Would that have motivated you? Yeah, absolutely. I think somebody told me I was going to end up in the penitentiary. 
Well, I hey. haven't ended up there yet. There's still time, Coach. There's still click, time. click, watch your head, dude. <laughs> have you ever watched the Blacklist? Uh, yeah, I was. I I started watching it, dude. I yeah. I, my, my cousin, who's there from Richmond, Virginia, he he does the uh, Man, dude. Here's my hat. Look. Be like Donald Trump, man. I can I can comb mine down. My, my, see, see this? This used to be straight ahead, man. I used to have a straight hairline. See, I always comb it to the side. Yeah, man. I, I rock with my hat off. What do those cuts cost? I mean, I got a lady from Vietnam that cuts my hair. She's the best. Her name's Tam, and she... 20 bucks, 25, I don't know. But I only get my cut my hair cut once a month, maybe once every two months. Uh I challenge you to take your hair off for the rest of the live. Yeah. I, I would take it for sure. But you know it all, boys, for the NFL and the WNFL doesn't get a lot of fans. Well, MK, there will be a female professional football player. Mm-hmm. There will be. They already got coaches in the NFL. Dude, you may become an NFL coach. I mean, dude, you get paid. You, you have a longer career. You probably end up making more money in the long run. You can actually walk. You know, coach. I mean, coaching, I've always thought that coaching was more rewarding than playing. What is your feelings on that, Coach Bald? I mean, coaching is the Lean next batter, where are you from? You look. I look like your uncle, okay? I don't know if that's a compliment. I don't know if that is an insult, okay? Now, if your uncle looks like Matt Damon or Brad Pitt or George Clooney. Reach yo. Keep reaching. Bryson. Reach yo. Out. What's up? Coach, what do you feel about coaching? How do you feel? Hey, man, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. This is Totem Pole Nation. We're well, better than Barstool. Before your ADD kicked in, okay, what I was trying to say is with the blacklist, my cousin, my blood cousin, is the stuntman for that show. And that, the Hustler Hesla. Wow. Yeah, dude. He's big time. Big time. Yep. There are superstars in the family, and I'm proud of them. We're way better than Barstool. AMF, wow. AMF bowling right there. He's in Libya. Is that where Omar Gaddafi was once the president? Because... In America, they always want us to hate people. It's crazy, man. Like, there's always the good guys and the bad guys. But, Coach, how do you feel about coaching? I mean, coaching is uh, it's essential. It needs to be done, you know. It's, it's how you leave blueprints. It's how you leave footprints. You know, I love it. I love it. Some of my favorite people in the world are coaching. You know, I wouldn't be who I am without – you got it, my coaches. You know? And the thing about coaches is they're extended family. They're not blood related. But sometimes the hard lesson, the black and white, they tell you always not what you want to hear, but what your ass needs to hear. And mm -hmm. I love my coaches. And, you know, if a coach is hard on you, he's probably got a good reason to be. Maybe he sees something in you that he once was and he could actually help you you know get to where you want to be and maybe a wall that he had a hard time climbing is nothing but a speed bump or a crack in the road for you through his guidance mm. yeah, man. Le lean I batter i believe that you know everybody needs mentors you know, it doesn't matter your age. I still, I still talk to my mentors every single day. 
You know, you it's good to gain knowledge. It's good to ask somebody that might have already been there and already done that. Which way to turn when you get to that fork? And coach, when you get to the fork, which way are you going to take? Pick it up. Because it, it, oh, Yogi Berra, it didn't matter which way you went because both of them led to his house. Okay, so lean batter. I'm learning from you. So you're not just learning from us, but I believe that all knowledge is knowledge of self. Because when you learn, you just don't learn about other people. You learn about yourself. That's how you have an emotional IQ. Omar Gaddafi, in your opinion, good guy or bad guy? Omar Gaddafi. Good guy or bad guy? There's no right answer. What's your favorite sport? Football. American football. Coach Ball, what's your favorite sport? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with pro wrestling, brother. Pro wow. wow. Pro wrestling. Coach, Coach, I'm, I'm going to get upset here. Legion of Doom. What's that? I I'm going to get upset, dude, because I had these kids in my class yesterday that were trying to tell me that Stone Cold was better than Ric Flair. I said, dude, Google Steve Austin and see who he wanted to be like. He wanted to be stunning Steve Austin. He wanted to be Ric Flair. Like, he's the anti-rock. Like, that's who he got his stick from. And they said that Stone Cold's top five didn't have Ric Flair in it. It, Ricky Steamboat was one. Dude, Ric Flair put Ricky Steamboat on and Dusty Rhodes. So what is – okay, so our favorite sports, you heard that. MK, what did Omar Gaddafi do? He was the president of a country that – oh, he was a bad guy. I mean, that's coming from a guy from – Libya, I don't know what he did, but I know we were taught as kids that he was a bad guy. So, Coach, Stone Cold, Ric Flair, who's the GOAT? I mean, without a doubt, they're both top five. You know, they're top five in their career. But, uh, you know, Ric Flair, he pretty much is the end-all, be-all. You know, he would be a guy that in the territory days, they would bring him in. And he would make whoever the other promotion had their best guy. He would make that guy, you know, look like the best thing that wrestling ever seen. And he would put him, yeah. over, you know, flair. Okay, so lean batter. He would always win. And he would always just push those guys up to another Get level. Get beat up. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is definitely one of the best wrestlers of all time. So you know, Definitely, in my opinion, the best uh WrestleMania match of all time was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Randy the Macho Man Savage. Yeah. I saw him in Richmond Coliseum. Uh, MK is a 12 year 13 year old 12 she's a middle school student from America. She does not know who Omar Gaddafi is. Okay? And she wants to know what did Omar Gaddafi do? I'm pretty sure he killed a lot of people. Right? I mean, I don't know. Bryson's favorite sport is baseball. That is good. Who is Bryson? Who's your favorite team? Coach Bald, who's your favorite baseball team? The Tampa Bay Rays? There you go. The Rays, brother. Yep. I live here. Coach, long. We, me and my son went to the mall, and they had a Wander Franco uniform. It was half off, and it was still $100. Yeah, don't pay for it. Yankees. That's a good team to like. It's a bad guy, he man. killed a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, Yankees is a good team to like. I mean, I mean, what did Jay-Z said? I made the Yankee hat cooler than the Yankee. What did he say? I can't remember, man. Listen to a lot of Jay-Z still, huh? Oh, dude, come on, man. I mean, yeah, I'm. Really, I don't now, but growing up, I remember what he says, you know. I made the Yankee hat more famous than the Yankee can. What's your favorite NFL team? Used to be the Washington Redskins, and my favorite player is my homie because my homie don't lose other than a marriage. All right, MK. 
Who's your favorite, Coach Bald? Who's your favorite NFL player and team? Well, I asked you, so I'm going to need that answer since it's no longer the Commanders. Are you a free agent? No, no. I'm, I'm going to stick with my team because they don't care about me and I don't care about them. And I'm from Richmond, Virginia. So I'm a Commanders fan, but my favorite player is my homie, Patrick Mahomes. And my son is so nice. That's good, but he's faking it. All right, he's a hustler. Bills for life. Ooh, I like that. I'm a Bills. My favorite team, the Bills. Steelers will still need to fire Mike Tomlin. Commanders are all right. Mm -mm. No, they're not. They haven't been good since they beat the Bills. I was so happy that you said my name. Say my name, say my name. I mean, lean batter. I mean, come on. Like, look at us. What else are we doing? I mean, what else can we do, man, but but to show love? Because, oh, Coach, it's better to give oh, than dear. to receive. What's that? What do you see, Coach? See, this is the good part of America right here. Look, we got Look at that. Over here. That's St. Petersburg, Florida. You got some dolphins? Like so. That's the Tampa Bay right there, ain't it, Coach? Coach, is that the Tampa Bay? Wow. Mm. That is – my dogs are barking at the animal. Yep. He sees a dolphin. Bryson, Bryson, where are you at? What state are you at? Are you in America? What state are you in? I'm in Virginia. Coach Bald is in Florida. We're friends since – we were y'all's age. Lean batter, how old are you? Are you young? Are you old? Are you like me? And, hey, coach, you're going to have to yeah. take it from here, buddy. I'm going to tap out. Hey, I love you, man. Thanks. I'm going to hang on here with these guys for a while. Yep, you're the best. I'm going to hang out. Right, yeah. If y'all got, got any questions, hit it up in the chat. Coach Bald, you're the best. Isn't Coach Bald the best? Coach Bald, I don't know if his, his screen froze up. I'm going to hang on here with y'all for a little bit. Bryson, where, where, what state are you in? You must be on the East Coast, man, because if you're on the West Coast, it's too early. It's 8 a.m. over here on the, the – what time is it lean batter? What time is it where you're at? I got to look Libby, Libby up. Hey, Bryson, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, what state are you in, though, in the USA? I'm in Virginia. I don't know how to get Coach Ball off here. See, this is new. We, uh, we used to use StreamYard to live stream, but it's 8 a.m. Okay, yeah, so you're on the East Coast. That's cool. Um, thank you for subbing. Thank you for liking. It's 8.10. I hurt my shoulder, so I can't go. That's just, I'm sorry you got your shoulder hurt. New York. There you go. New York. It's a great state, man. Man, I love you guys, man. This is, this is great being on here with y'all and Totem Pole Nation. And, man, hey, if you're, if you're watching the live stream, my, my sidekick, this is Coach Taylor from Totem Pole Nation. I'm a high school coach in Richmond, Virginia. Do you play Fortnite? Do y'all play Fortnite? My view, my view ain't it. Come from. I come from Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Is it backwards? 
Street FM. It's 3 p.m. Okay, good. I think every is everything backwards on this junk? Yeah. I have to write it backwards. I don't know if I can write it backwards. That's crazy, man. I don't know how to write backwards. See how this looks. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah, y'all get it. Streak FN. The K's backwards. Streak FN. So you can't blame me. They're swift. We love them. We love them all. And we love MK. We chat every live stream so i'm here talking to you then i say hey to your son i ain't never met someone from new york i ain't YouTube wants people vertical streaming. So, you know, I'll stay on here for a couple more minutes and then I'm gone. MK, what time you start school? Like one of my comments. I probably did. Yeah, I don't make all the shorts, okay?